What's good, everyone? Aggie Coach here, man. Here again. So, um, I hope that you guys are going to find this really interesting. Uh, this is my recruiting center rule set for the, for the Fat 8 Conference. This is for the end of the season. And, um, and moving towards the beginning of the new season. So... This right here is going to be really, really unique, and I hope that you guys are uh, going to enjoy um, what I'm going to show you. So I've created my own recruiting center rule set, and it basically has three charts in it. Um, I'm going to just kind of go through this thing, and this can, this can be a long video, and I'm going to try to make it really short. I'm going to try to go through this thing quickly. Um, and if you guys have questions, man, just 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 ask. Um, so I may not cover everything because it, it's pretty detailed. So the first thing is I have is a school interest chart. And this is like right away, like right into right into it. So I have three charts. The first one is a school interest chart, and this is what it looks like. All right, let me try to try to get the camera where you guys can see. All right, so I have a school interest chart for every school in the conference. And basically what this does is it shows you what each school's interest is in their recruits, in the recruits, right? So uh, up here at the top, you see O-line, um, you see the secondary, running back, fullback, tight end, quarterback, linebacker, D-end, defensive line, wide receiver, and total points. Now, the total points that you see over here on the end, the total points is the total number of points that a recruit has to, has to receive by the end of the recruiting period um, in, order to be, in order to qualify for a scholarship to that school. All right, I'm going to flip it to the back real quick because I have uh, the other schools back here. North Carolina State, um, the Tar Heels, Notre Dame, ECU. Okay, now... Every school has their own interest. Every school is interested in something different. So, for example, for offensive line, for the Aggies, you see they're interested in power and they're interested in run blocking. So, for there, a player that performs well um, in that area, if they pick A and T as their number one, as one of their, their top three schools. Um, they will receive bonus points for performing well in the in the areas where the school is most interested in. Okay, this is the case for all the schools. I'm not going to go through all of them, but if you look at Michigan here, Michigan is interested in running and pass blocking, and they're interested in power. So there, you can get a bonus from there. So this is just to kind of give you guys an idea. Uh, if you look over here at quarterbacks, for example, you see quarterbacks up here. The Aggies are interested in option quarterback. They're interested in accuracy, passing accuracy, and they're interested in the 40 time. So you can receive bonuses if you work well there. But look at HU. Look at Hampton for their quarterback. They're interested in pocket passer quarterback. You can get plus one, and they're interested in accuracy. So all of the schools, each school have their own individual requirements for what they feel is most they most important need for their program. And it's different for every school. It's completely different. Now, this is how this works. So I wanted to just show you guys that chart first. So this is how this works. So it's the same for all the schools. And in the end, you can see, for example, to go to Notre Dame, you need a nine. So that's, you know, that's a lot of points to earn. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to explain to you guys how the points work. So let me flip on. All right, now here. This right here is the athlete interest chart. Now, this part I'm going to have to show you. Um, so here, basically what will happen is, you put the, you have your roster. So you see over here on the left, athlete names. So here, 
you will list the names of all of your athletes. So in my case, uh, if I am recruiting for, if I decide this week, all of the Fat Egg schools are recruiting for cornerbacks, I'm gonna have a roster of, let's say, and these are random models, so basically random miniatures. So basically what I'll do is I will go in my box and I will randomly pull out 30 figures, right? Randomly pull out 30 figures. Put those 30 figures down on the table, okay? Name those 30 figures. Each person will have a name and a number, right? And then I'm gonna I'm gonna paint them all in shorts and a tank top, for example, right? Then they're gonna come to the combine. When they get to the combine, this is how this is gonna work. Each player is allowed to pick three of their top schools that they wanna go to. This is determined randomly, and we're gonna do this real quick. Now, here's, here's something interesting though. If a player does not qualify to go to any of the top three schools that he picks, that player will have a minus one penalty to the points that he's earned because for lack of interest because he's basically gonna have to pick a school that he doesn't really want to go play for right so i wanted to do that just to just to make it interesting all right so let me show you how this works now when we do the combine of course i'm gonna have to have all eight coaches on the field which i don't have right now but i eventually will and all of the coaches will be painted in coach colors um i'll show you guys a little better next week when i have the rest of the coaches so here just as an example i've randomly picked um, three figures out of my box, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to determine what these three figures, what school these three figures will be interested in going to, okay? And so each school, as you see here, is going to be assigned a number. So the Aggies will be one, Hampton will be two, Ohio State will be three, Michigan will be four, four. Texas a and will be five, and so forth and so on, right? So let's just take this guy and let's just say that this guy's name right here, let's just randomly say this guy's name is Charlie Wells, right? We'll just make up a name for him real quick. So let's say his name is Charlie Wells and we're gonna determine what school Charlie wants to go to. So right here, I have a dice, right? And so I'm going to roll to see what school Charlie wants to go to. Now, because dice only has six sides and I have eight schools, what I will do is, what I decided what I decided to do is, um, I will only roll one dice for the first three schools, for one, two, and three. For all of the other schools, I'll roll two dice, okay? So, so first we'll check to see if one of the first three schools get picked, and then we'll roll two dice for everybody else, right? All right, so here we go. So let's see, so the first one, let's see what Charlie picks, okay? It is a five, so, here, as you guys can see, the first school that Charlie picked is Texas A&M. That's his first school, all right? Now, let's do one more, because he has to pick three. Okay, I rolled a five. He can't pick the same school, so now I'm gonna go to doubles. See what happens? It's a four. He rolled a four. So his second school is Michigan. So Charlie has Texas A&M and Michigan that he's interested in. Now let's try one more. It's a two. Charlie is interested in Hampton. So what I will do here on my sheet is I will put Charlie Wells, his name right here, and I will put a check mark by the three schools that he picked. Now let's go and see what those schools' requirements are. So now we're gonna flip back. We're gonna check and see what their requirements are. Okay, he doesn't have anybody on that sheet. All right, so to go to Hampton, he needs a seven. He needs to amass seven points. To go to Michigan, he needs to come up with 10 points. Michigan has really high standards. And if he wants to go to Texas A&M, he needs to come up with eight points, right? So that is it. That is how that works. Now let's go to the last part of the recruiting process so you guys can see. And we'll, I will randomly do this for all the players. All right, now, here we go. Skills and development chart. Skills, skill drills and development chart. So you can see here I've created a point system. All right? So once, so each, for each drill, a player will get three tries. The first successful try will be a half point if he only gets one successful try and fails two. 
If he gets two successful tries, he will get one point. And if he gets all three right, he will get a total of two points. Now, here's the exception. Defensive line and offensive line drills are worth three points instead of two because they have less drills. Okay? Now, those bonus points that you guys saw on that front chart for those other schools, those bonus points do not go towards a player's total point cost. They only go towards the school that that player has chosen. So, if the player performs well but does not qualify for the three top schools that he's chosen, he does not get bonus points. He only can deal with the points, the, the, the general points that he's amassed over the course of the training camp. So, here we go. So, here I've worked out all of the different drills for each position. So, you can see quarterback, halfback, fullback, wide receiver, tight end, O-line, deep defensive tackles, defensive ends, linebackers, cornerback safeties, and strong safeties. Right? Some teams don't have strong safeties. So it depends on that team's system. So for example, these points up here that you guys saw. So let's say our player here, Charlie Wells, is trying out for the linebacker position. Right? So these are the drills that he's going to go. He's going to run the 40 three times. He's going to do a power test three times. He's going to do block shedding three times. He's going to do pursuit drill three times. He's going to do tackling drill three times. He's going to try and get off a block and tack the, uh, sack the quarterback three times. And then he's going to um, go after the tackling dummy three times. So those are going to be the drills that Charlie is going to go through. And the max that Charlie can get is if he gets only one for each. And this is not, this is not total. This is for every drill. So if he did everything perfectly, he would get two, four, six, eight, ten, like that, right? Of course, they're never going to do everything perfectly. So, in the end, it's possible, in the end, it's possible that, you know, he could not even come close to the ten points that he needs to go to Michigan. But now, if in these drill sets, we go back and we look at the school interest, what does Michigan say about the linebacker position? So now what we do is we can go back and we can look and see what are the Wolverines' interests in the linebacker position. So uh, what we find for Michigan is, here we go, pursuit and tackling. So he can earn plus one point if he does exceptionally well in the pursuit and tackling, and he can earn one point. Yeah, if he does exceptionally well in the pursuit drill and in the tackling drill. So if we come back over here and take a look. We come back over here and take a look. We have the pursuit drill here and we have the tackling drill here. So in these two particular areas, the Wolverines are going to be particularly interested in. Because those are the two things that they're interested in. And it's the same thing with all of the schools. So that is the way that I'm going to be doing my recruiting process. And like I said, once players are locked in, there's going to be uh, a cap on how many recruits can go per position um, based on the roster size. So once those positions are locked in and those players are locked in, the Wolverines will not be allowed to make any base modifications or player modifications um, once the season starts. So once we go into the off season, I'm allowed to. I can modify the way that the players look and the way that they play and do conversions, do you know customizations and so forth on the players. But once the season starts, that's it. After that, there are no changes allowed, no base changes allowed. You, you have to deal with what you got when you got it. So. That is my recruiting process. That's the new process that I developed um, for for my conference. And I'm going to be doing that for every team in the conference. So I'm going to have, once the season is, once season one ends, um, I'm going to be having recruiting for each school. I'm going to do it for each school probably two or three times a week until I finish all eight schools and finish all of the positions and, and I suspect that that'll take me throughout the summer um, deciding on who the new athletes coming in for the next season is going to be for the players. It also gives me time to work on my stadium and learn a little more um, about the game from you guys. So that's where I am man. That's what I'm doing. I hope you guys um, enjoy it. 
this is a, a really unique process that I designed and, and I had a lot of fun working with it and play testing it and um, it would be nice to get some of you guys to play test it too man let me know what you think let me know how it plays all right peace